So I am talking about the sample size determination. Sample size determination is a task faced by the research scholars. Uh, so while doing so, uh, they should be careful about the determination of sample size. So if the sample size is lower, uh, as based on the population, the sampling may be biased and sometimes the result may not be correct. So uh, if the sample size is too high is also, uh, you know, uh, creating some problem with the research scholars. So this video uh, speak about the appropriateness of the sample, sample size and uh, what will be the appropriate sample size for the social science research. So this slide uh, speak about uh, the details of the sampling. What is sampling means? Sampling means creating a subset of the population. So the population is wide so that we have to have an understanding of the population through samples because the data collection, the entire, the entire data collection is maybe expensive, sometimes it may be impossible. So uh, we should have to identify a sampling frame. So sampling frame is the list of uh, objects from the population that could be your potential sample. So if the sample frame is incorrect, the result is also incorrect and the researcher may be biased the wrong inference will be the result of the wrong sample frame so after all the, all researchers uh, you know they are assumed as these uh, the, the distribution created from the population that is a normal one so the all statistics depends on this assumption that the distribution is normal or normal distribution curve this slide speak about the factors affecting the sample size. So sample size determine, determine, uh, is determined on based on some factors. The first one is effect size. Effect size means what would be the insight uh, uh, which was which will be derived from the samples. So the effect size, uh, you know, clarity is essential and the standard deviation of the sample the standard deviation is a variation from the mean of the population so the standard deviation is another factor then the level of confidence uh, which would be uh, by the research scholar is also another factor and the margin of error so margin of error may be one percentage five percentage or ten percentage so it's maybe the margin of error is very less in case of science and science and scientific researchers and the margin of error is uh, quite uh, mean space for the social science research. Sometimes a 10 percentage would be fine. So there are uh, rule of thumb in samples, but uh, we cannot, uh, uh, you know, obey all this rule of thumb. Generally, we can say some rule of thumb uh, uh, while determination of sample size. When we do prepare the multivariate models such as multiple regression, logistics regression, Factor analysis, uh, there are, uh, you know, references and citation for the sample size uh, would be 20 to 30 times more than the independent variables. So, you know the independent variable. Independent variables are those variables which are, uh, uh, which are, uh, you know, uh, the, the dependent variable depends on the independent variable. So, the independent variable sum uh, total uh, will influence the dependent variable. So whatever be the independent variable, so we have to have a samples of 20 times more than the independent variable. For example, if the independent variable constitutes uh, 10, the sample size would be 10 multiplied by 20 times, that means 200. So that's a proportion, uh, you know, uh, uh, specified by uh, no, uh, uh, specified by the, uh, some others. So, so we, we can also follow this rule of thumb. The sample selected by the research scholars may be random sampling or non-random sampling. Random sampling means each and every population, uh, you know, uh, equal chance of being selected. This random sampling is mostly preferred in social science uh, because of to avoid uh, sampling biases. So random sampling is ideal for if the population is homogeneous. So, so in random sampling, as I said, uh, each person has an equal chance of being selected. So there are two types of uh, random sampling, basically uh, stratified random sampling and cluster sampling. These samples are uh, used by these sampling methods are used by the research scholars mostly. So stratified means divide the population into groups. Uh, the groups are called strata. 
and uh, uh, so we have to collect uh, samples from the each strata okay then cluster is population is divided into different clusters uh, uh, and to be we have to select one cluster uh, at random but we have to collect the entire units of that cluster selected so the stratified random sampling and cluster sampling uh, is most mostly used by the researchers so this is another method which mostly used by machine learning uh, based algorithms when we do machine learning for data analytics in finance and all this backing method which is also known as bootstrap aggregation method is used so this method reduces the sampling biases and each item may be replaced several times so that to, to get the correct samples so uh, in bagging method random sample of data in a training set is selected with replacement individual data points can be chosen more than once uh, so that the weak models are then trained and independently depending on the type of task so regression whatever it is classification whatever it is uh, for example the average or majority of those pr predictions yield uh, a more accurate estimate so uh, so this bootstrap aggregation is undertaken for to get an accurate result mostly used in uh, in the machine learning algorithms so the purpose of uh, sampling uh, is to make an inference about the population so uh, but at the same time we, we are not in a position to collect the entire population so that we adopt sampling so we have to calculate uh, mean and standard deviation of the samples so that the assumption is the samples mean and standard mean is uh, similar with the population so mean means average uh, so using an appropriate hypothesis test and make inferences the hypothesis test states that the same which can be generalized in the population the inferences can be deal uh, like that these inferences from the sample can be generalized in the population that's the significance of the sample so the sample mean is uh, random variable uh, y uh, so different samples have taken from the population have different mean values okay so sampling distribution refer, uh, refers to when we take different samples you know you will get the different mean values so sample distribution refers to probability of distribution of a sample mean or standard deviation computed from several random samples of the sample size so this is the concept of sample distribution sample distribution refers to the probability distribution of a sample mean or standard deviation computed from several random samples of the sample size so uh, in sampling we have to have a sampling distribution that sampling distribution is appropriate uh, should be appropriate and it should represent the population so this is the most utilized theorem in the samples that is central limit theorem so when we do social science research we have to have a random sampling and we assume that uh, the, if the samples are uh, type of a large samples will follow the normal distribution that the distribution should be normal that is assumption we don't need to check again the normality so the as in in the large samples it is assumed that the distribution is normal uh, with a mean value uh, the mean value which is same as the mean of the population that is assumption of the central limit theorem so again i repeat the central limit theorem is most utilized theorem in sampling part so the central limit theorem assumes that the samples mean is same as the mean of the population the sampling distribution of the means of large samples will follow a normal distribution with the mean if your samples you know is justify as as the the the, the uh, earlier said the rule of thumb that means 20 to 30 times more than the independent variable that's the basic sample size if your sample size is like uh, a good sample size that means your distribution is normal distribution so you can use this parametric test no need to find again this normality and all so this uh, central limit theorem is uh, was suggested by george palaya uh, and uh, it was cited by fisher 2010 so this central limit theorem is the basis of the hypothesis tests uh, such as uh, isa test and t test so these tests are parametric tests these tests purely based on the central limit theorem it is assumed that the distribution is normal if provided if you have a good sample size but uh, remember if you have a your sample size is not justified according to the population so you cannot use this central limit theorem so the sample size should be appropriate then only you can use this central limit theorem so if if a scholar you know the she she or he can choose this 
convenient sampling they cannot uh, look for this uh, central limit theorem to justify if your sample is random and your sample is like uh, appropriate for the population that means your sample size is big then you can have an assumption that you are you are following a central limit theorem that means your mean is appropriate uh, is is more or less same, same with the mean of the population so this is the assumption of the central limit theorem the distribution will describe with a normal curve the mean of the sample will be uh, equal the mean of the population so the standard deviation of the distribution is known as the standard error of the mean implying that a larger sample size is less sampling error there will be so central limit theorem is what allow us to make an inference about the sample and to have a known uh, degree of confidence in their accuracy so then if you following the central limit theorem this theorem will allow as to make an inference about the uh, about the sample and which can be justified in the population and to have a non degree of confidence in their accuracy so remember some of the people in the scholars they again they check the normality you know in social science which is the data when you check the normality the data will not be normalized normal so you can simply follow this under limit theorem and you can continue with this uh, Mm, parametric assumptions, parametric tests.